Hello and uh, welcome to a quick video on how to use ChatGDP to make defining your page object model functions uh, exponentially faster. My name is Ben. I run Loop Software and Testing Services. We provide uh, playwright automation for startups, enterprise companies, a whole host of different people, as well as we do a lot of manual testing with what we call a product-oriented approach. So um, quick rundown on ChatGDP first. Um, so just uh, how it works. Um, ChatGDP can remember the things that are in the threads that it has, but it can't remember across threads. So the advantage here is that you can give it templates and you can give it examples to work from, and then it will build from that point, which is really nice, actually. Now, the use case is when you have a boatload of things that you need to define. Now, for this example, I'm only going to define my upper header menu, and I'm going to create a new class called, you know, header nav, let's say, or header menu. Um, in this case, I would actually probably go as far as just write the code myself because it's not that much. But let's say you have 20, 30, 40 things on a page that you do need to define and you need functions for each thing. That's where ChatGGP actually becomes really, really nice. And so let's first record um, the actual code. So you can see here we have the um, navs, perfect. And then we're going to click on the different components and get those to load. And then we're going to click start now. Perfect. And then we're going to hit done. Great. So let's go over to uh, the um, template we're going to use. So here is a template of a class. So let's go and give ChatGPT this template. Here is a template of a class I would like to use to make a new class. And it's gonna go and try to tell me something because normally it does. And so let's go and get the code. Great. So this is the one inefficiency with any part of working with ChatGDP is that when you don't want it to write you the answer, it still writes the answer and there's no real easy way to cancel it. You can click off and then click back. Um, but at the same point, it's not great. So on that front, um, you're stuck, right? Here's an example. Um, I didn't need the instructions. I want you to create a new class called uh, header uh, menu and create the relevant uh, functions for the code below. Please remember to use step and custom expect messages like this function. And we're gonna go back and just remember, we're just gonna remind it what we want. And we're gonna go. Sure, here's a new class called header menu that you can use to navigate through the different pages of the website. And it writes a class. Now, once again, um, if you have five different functions, it doesn't feel like the fastest thing in the world, but it certainly um, goes much faster when you have 20 to 25 different functions. And you can actually see that um, it has its steps, right? Which is all great. So it's even following uh, this function sort of template that we have. And the names are not bad. Go to home page, go to manage services page. Uh, the step name, I can click the manage of services link, which is awesome. So while it finishes that, and then we'll copy and paste that in, we're gonna go and record one other use case. So what we're gonna do is we're going to clear this out, then let's record it, and then let's fill out this form. So let's say Ben Fellows, and then I'm not gonna use my real email, so let's just do hello at workwithloop.com, and then let's say let's learn cool things about QA. Cool, right? And then um, let's stop. Once again, this is not where you would necessarily do it with only three or four lines of code, but um, 
Oh, cool. And by the way, it'll also tell you how to use it, right? So it'll give you examples of the code, right? And one of the next things that I do want to talk about is you can actually give it classes and then it'll write test cases from those classes, which is super, super cool. Um, but here is another example. So then let's say, great, uh, let's create another class called uh, contact page and create the relevant functions from the below code please make sure to use arguments in the fill statements and um, include the arguments in the step name And it's another class. So you can start to see how at scale this is going to be really, really fast. And we've done this actually over the last two to three days where we'll go to a page where we have a whole variety of um, different pieces of information and it creates fantastic functions from it. Now sometimes you have to give it feedback, right? So here you have, a, the, the, it's decided that it actually wants to create a function called fill out form. That actually is fine, right? That's not the end of the world, but we're gonna give it feedback. We're gonna have to change it, right? Um, we're gonna actually say instead, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. instead what we're gonna say is, um, please break out fill out form into relevant function into more individual functions. Certainly, here's an updated version. So to kind of summarize what we've done so far, uh, we've used a template class to create new classes based off of code that we're giving chat GDP. The use case is that when you have 30 to 40 different things that you're gonna to need to fill out in a use case, you can give it to that, it will then uh, write the functions based off of that, and it does really cool stuff. It puts arguments in step names, it does a whole different host of different things. Um, there's always gonna be tweaking. It takes feedback really well, oddly, because it's a AI system, I guess. Um, so in other videos, what we'll probably do is show you how to use um, uh, ChatGDP to identify code duplicates, right? You can ask it, okay, does this code exist within this class already? If not, please add relevant functions. That's another use case that we'll have a different video on. You can have ChatGDP write different test cases using different classes, which is really cool, just by describing the use case. You can have uh, ChatGDP um, change action steps to expect steps. So let's say you are, are wanting things, expecting text to be there. So you could actually click it during the recording, just be like, hey, switch this function to an expect this text to be visible function. We'll cover that in a different video. Um, and then last but not least, we'll cover sort of chat GDP versus GitHub Copilot in another video as well. They're built on the same underlying engine, but they sort of serve different purposes in making us faster. So uh, with that, that was a quick POC on how we use chat GDP to go just exponentially faster when it comes to large scale POM definitions. And what we'll do is let's just go ahead and... Uh, create a new class with our new class. We're gonna say pages, new folder, and we said this was the contact us uh, .ts, and we paste it in and look at that. It's um, great. And once again, actually, kind of cool. It's uh, not perfect in the sense that it's just needed to be updated right there. Cool, perfect, simple as that. And we now have fill out name, fill out email, fill out message. So, and it has arguments, which is awesome. All right, guys, talk soon. Appreciate it. Hope to see you soon.